Okay, once again, good morning, everyone. And thanks very much for joining us today for our latest uh, Sony Home Cinema product announcement. Um, we've got some really exciting uh, stuff to share with you guys today. Um, so without further ado, we'll get started with this. Um, I'm joined today by uh, our Residential Solutions uh, European Sales Manager, Enrico, and our Home Cinema Product Manager, Chris Mullins. Today, uh, the seminar today uh, is for channel partners only. So this is an exclusive uh, event for yourselves uh, where we're gonna be introducing some of our latest uh, products. Everything you see today is embargoed still until 2 p.m. Central European time tomorrow. Um, so we'd kindly ask for you to refrain from publishing anything publicly until that time. We will, however, send you all of the information about the new products, including all of the marketing packs ahead of that so you can prepare um, all of your websites, so on and so forth for your customers. Today's session is gonna last around 45 minutes uh, and we'll have 15 minutes time for questions and answers uh, at the end of the session. Um, you will see on the right-hand side your chat box. So feel free to ask any questions uh, throughout the call and we'll take those uh, right at the end for you. Um, don't hesitate to ask any difficult questions because it's gonna be Chris and Enrico answering them, not myself. So we can put them under pressure and on the spot for that. Um, moving on to the agenda, uh, just as a, a run through of what we're going to cover today. Uh, first of all, Enrico is going to give us an introduction um, to our corporate strategy for, for this year and give you an insight into what Sony's uh, looking to, to achieve for FY21. Uh, Chris is then going to take us back, uh, look at some trends from what we've seen in the last year um, and go over some, some market data there. He'll then get straight into the new models um, that we're going to be announcing to you guys today. Um, and we'll have some, some shootout comparison data for you as well, followed by just a brief summary at the end and then the question and answers. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Enrico to talk you through the FY21 plans for Sony. Thank you, Adam. Uh, welcome to the seminar. Uh, okay, let me start with something uh, important. And generally speaking, it's about our changes, the changes to our team in Europe. So now we have uh, we are uh, an in independent business group, so independent from the other professional part of the, of, the, of the business. We've also improvement and uh, investment in the new BDM team, business development team uh, that will be focused on end user and consultants. So investment also in our team because we are becoming independent, so we have become more self-sufficient and more focused on our activities from any point of view. And what is important is that we have a new name. So from Corporate Display Solutions, now we are the Professional Display and Solution. So I think it is much more in line with what we offer you. So any kind of display and solution related to that for the B2B market and from the high-end residential and customer install market and super yacht market niche and this kind of thing. So, uh, now there is, it's very clear the level of investment and level of focus of our company in our group that is becoming independent. In the next slide, what I wanted to uh, remind you that you know probably better than me is the unbelievable um, portfolio of products and solutions we have from the Bravo Professional, the Crystal LED, business projectors, uh, remote cameras, being for me microphone, uh, projectors for simulation and, and for planetarium and educational um, solutions and also digital signage without uh, uh, forgetting of course our home senior projectors that is the main reason of today's presentation with our new um, solutions. So that is to give you that all this, this range of products is our in our direct control and now we can really um, manage the best uh, solutions, the best service offering to you. Then in the next one, I think that I want to focus on, uh, tell you what we are our focus area for the 2020 U, 2021 fiscal year, just started the 1st of April. So we want to continue to grow our core corporate educational business. That's absolutely important and crucial for us. As well, we, uh, we want to explore new markets like the hospitality and retail in order to increase and to enlarge the size of, of our presence in the business. 
And last but not least, focus on high-end custom install as we did already in the fiscal year 2020. And uh, as, you, as you remember, we created uh, our sales team focus on that. So just to, to uh, remind you uh, what I, I anticipated to you last year, some months ago, we launched the past uh, projectors, the last projectors was, we launched in September, we have created more focus uh, sales team for B2B and, and residential. And in the residential area, that is our area, and there are sitting, of course, the home senior projectors, that is our core uh, products, but also we can offer Bravi professional displays with a range in 4K native HDR displays from 32 inches to 100 inches with or without a tuner and a micro LED display called crystal LED for any size of sky scale that are also in the second generation that we can provide with a lot of improvements. Again, home scene projectors, native 4K, HDR projectors from 1,500 lumens to 10K lumen. That's absolutely amazing performance. But now, without further ado, I we really want to take uh, to hand over to uh, Christopher Mullins that will uh, uh, bring you with details of what we are uh, presenting today. And let's leave the microphone to him. Thank you again. Okay. Um, thanks, Enrico, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, and I hope you are well and uh, keeping safe. Um, I know uh, it's quite disappointing for me, in particular, not being able to see you all face to face with this announcement and show you the great products we're introducing uh, to you today. But in the meantime, I'm sure you've had a look around the Spark um, exhibition, uh, the virtual exhibition that we're doing. So if you haven't, make sure you step in and have a look. Um, but uh, as Adam mentioned, I'll quickly uh, have a look back at what we achieved in 2020 and then move on to our uh, new product uh, announcement. So to start, this is what we did in 2020. We had um, we launched three new models uh, and starting with the groundbreaking breaking new flagship projector at the top of our lineup with the uh, GTZ380. And this really uh, redefined what was possible with HDR image quality uh, with projection in particular. So we, just as a reminder, it was 10,000 lumens, high native contrast, 100% DCI color space without any compromise. So no, no brightness loss with filters, all in a compact chassis for this level of performance. Uh, and we've seen a really great adoption since this was available uh, in January. And we really look forward to seeing the special installations uh, that you, you guys all have planned with this model in, in 2021. Uh, then we uh, also launched the VW290 2000 lumen laser projector and the VW590 1800 lumen lamp projector that built upon the great pet pedigree of the VW760 and the 570, but also incorporated the X1 bore projector processor that took like HDR performance to a whole new level with our home cinema projectors. And we can see from the slide that the industry and the press um, really got behind these products and gave us great reviews, uh, many awards and recommendations, highlighting all those product benefits. So I think it was a really uh, successful um, launches uh, of, those, of those three products. Um, so I'd like to go through some of the market trends uh, we've seen. So in 2020, as we all know, it was a particularly challenging year for, for everybody, um, especially with lockdowns, with showrooms being closed, social distancing and restricted travel globally. Uh, many of these challenges are still remaining into 2021, but there is some light now visible at the end of the tunnel with vaccination programs, etc. But one trend we have seen is that consumers have turned to home entertainment with the lack of options uh, externally, especially. Uh, and we can see this in the market data on screen um, on this slide. So in the top left chart, this is a view of the home cinema projector market uh, in quantity uh, for the 3K euro and above price segment for normal throw projectors. And this, the source for this was PMA. Um, and we can see that in 2020, it started as we would have expected with quite a slow start due to various lockdowns. However, demand continued even, even through those lockdowns and it built to 2020 Q4 being actually the largest um, quarter ever for uh, this particular price segment with over 3,900 units sold, um, yeah, which hasn't been uh, recorded previously. So quite outstanding year in many ways, uh, 2020. 
Uh, and looking at the market share performance from Sony during 2020, we can see that Sony remains uh, the number one choice for premium home cinema projectors. And with the launch of the new products, we can see that we captured more than six points of market share through the year uh, to uh, end at nearly 40% market share. And this is even with increasing competition in that three to five K segment, which with Optima and, and Epson, uh, we've still managed to uh, gain share um, in this segment. Um, and then if we look at the uh, specific price segments where we launched the two new models last year, so the 590 uh, in the five to 10 K price segment, and then the 10 to 25 K price segment with the 790. So the bottom two charts on this screen, we can see a real fantastic achievement with the 590 ending at 65% market share and the 790 at 77% market share. So this really is an outstanding performance. Uh, we recovered the market leading share in the five to 10 K segment uh, and extending further our dominance of the 10 to 25 K um, segment. So we really do thank you all for your efforts in, in pushing these models in 2020. Uh, and we can really uh, see that these models kind of resonate with the market and consumers. And we really look to continue supporting you with some great products that we're going to be announcing to you uh, right now, actually. So let's get into the 2021 product lineup. So again, this is what we did in 2020. We launched um, three new models, the GTZ 380 flagship, the 790 and 590 with the X1 for projector. But what you'll notice is that there are a couple of gaps in the lineup with the 270 and 870. So today um, we're here to announce uh, two new models. Um, and the first of those being the VW 890 2200 Lumen Premium Laser Projector with ARCF lens and X1 for projector at 25K euros. And uh, the VW 290 1500 Lumen Native 4K Lamp Projector with X1 for projector processor at uh, 5.5K euros. So we're very excited to bring you this now completely unified lineup of 4K models from VW290 up to 890 with the X1 for projector. This is one of the reasons why we wanted to launch these units as soon as possible, as we felt there was a functionality gap, especially in that premium laser segment with the 870. And we wanted to resolve that as quickly as possible. Uh, one thing you may have noticed is that, unfortunately, there are um, price increases. Uh, we have seen manufacturing costs rise during 2020, as with many other AV manufacturers. However, the VW290 in particular still remains the most affordable native 4K projector on the market and offers terrific value uh, to the customer. Also, one advantage by in introducing the products now, rather than what we would normally do in in September and with an availability from uh, early May timing, uh, so only in a couple of weeks time, is that there will be, there are various sporting events happening this summer. So we got the European uh, Euro 2021 football championships and the Olympics as well. And typically these uh, events really drive large display sales. And with attendance being restricted this year, we may see that effect amplified to some extent. So we really look forward to having a successful launch uh, with you guys um, in, into, the, into the summer months. So let's start with the VW290. So this chart shows you all the unique selling points of our entry model to our native 4K lineup. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these individually, as many of you know them very, very well. But let me highlight what is new and what is key to remember when selling this model. So highlighted in yellow are the new features. And you can see that the picture processing has been enhanced with the inclusion of the X1 for projector chipset in this model. This offers the dynamic HDR enhancer and improvement to reality creation that we saw with the VW590 and 790 last year. We are also bringing um, the model in line with the rest of our lineup and improving the usability by enabling separate SDR and HDR settings for fine-tuned calibration. Before we get into these items though, uh, in, in, in a lot more detail, I want to remind you of the fundamental benefits of the 290 and that is that it is a native 4K SXRD projector and what value this gives um, to the consumer. So when a consumer is looking to invest in a home cinema, they're looking for high quality big screen entertainment. And that's whether they're watching the latest 4K HDR Blu-ray or streaming service or 4K HDR live sport. 
And to deliver the highest quality 4K and especially HDR, you need to excel in a number of different of picture quality aspects. So that is resolution, contrast, color performance, and, and motion handling. Um, and this is what SXRD um, really delivers. It's why it's our core technology with our projector lineup. And it is what differentiates Sony from all the 4K competition, especially at the entry price point. Um, so we at Sony know um, the other panel technologies really well, the DLP, LCD technologies. We do have solutions with some of those technologies for other applications. But Sony chose to develop SXRD all the way back in 2005. Um, as these technologies have compromises with image quality, especially with those expected in high-end uh, home cinema projection. So firstly, and inevitably, it's uh, resolution is the first point we always raise, and it is a native 4K panel, uh, as, as we always talk about, and it's got 8.8 .8 million pixels, and all of that is without pixel shifting. So it really is resolution without, without compromise. Um, and you have to combine not only just the panel resolution, but also combine it with a great optical system, a lens, advanced signal processing. And with all those combined, you get the best 4K clarity available on the market. And this is especially true when images are in motion uh, as well. And then there's contrast. This is essentially the dynamic range that the projector can produce. So without a good black level, you cannot display a high dynamic range experience. SXRD has high native contrast ratio and deep black level. And this is what truly separates a true home cinema projector from a kind of entertainment uh, projector. And finally, all Sony home cinema projectors are three panel systems. So this enables bright, balanced, lifelike colors, which really bring that content on screen uh, to life. So that's just a quick reminder of SXRD and kind of our, our core benefits, but let's Let's talk about the key update for the VW290 and 890. And this is the addition of the X1 for projector. So the X1 for projector utilizes the expertise from our Bravia TVs and optimizes the, the processing for the projector display characteristics. And this processor combines innovative technologies with high precision frame analysis to deliver features like dynamic HDR enhancer and improve super resolution reality creation. So let's get into the details of dynamic HDR enhancer. So this is a frame by frame process that in, in enhances HDR content without using uh, content metadata. So we do analyze each frame. Uh, so visually, what you can expect is what is shown on the, the scene here. So the light of the star is brightened through signal processing and the overall black level is improved through dimming to deliver the best contrast and dynamic range um, on screen. So how is it done? Well, it's done through uh, the new X1 projector processor kind of enabling this performance through three processes. So firstly, there is an evolution in the HDR signal analysis. So it's moved away from kind of an SDR based analysis that we had with the predecessors to a high resolution analysis for HDR where many more tones in the highlights and shadows can be identified and individually uh, processed. Uh, next, we then utilize the high resolution analysis to enhance peak brightness and color tones to expand the dynamic range without saturation. So we're really brightening those highlights. So we're expanding that top end of the HDR uh, performance. And then finally, um, we and this is unique to Sony actually, we utilize precision dimming of the laser or iris um, to improve the black level without loss of dark tones. So we're deepening the bottom end of the HDR. And when we combine um, all of these together, we are really expanding the dynamic range of the image uh, on screen to give a much greater HDR impact and a HDR image that's much closer to the intended HDR image. And the intent of the creator is really the cornerstone of Sony's philosophy when it comes to all of its display products. Sony is a unique brand in that it is involved in the complete life cycle of content from creation all the way through to display. And this is what we call our, our lens to living room strategy. 
And uh, with Sony Pictures, a uh, major Hollywood studio, our market leading cinematography cameras and master grading monitors, Sony are uniquely able to understand the creator's intent behind an HDR image. And this understanding is what we utilized when creating the dynamic HDR enhancers. Our engineers aim to deliver the HDR intent and impact of the creator dynamically, whether it's in a dark scene or a bright scene. So this is what you can see on the screen here. Obviously, it's a bit of a simulation for PowerPoint, but this is the intent behind it. We're looking to get as close as possible to what a grading uh, a person doing the grading on a grading professional monitor would see and have the same impact on a projector. And we do it through those three effects, brightening those highlights, expanding those highlight tones, and also creating those deeper blacks. So you get much more dynamic range, more intent of the image, um, HDR intent in the image. Uh, and here's some more detail about the improved HDR signal al analysis uh, with an example of a bright and a dark scene. Um, here we are comparing what is detectable in terms of uh, signal levels between contrast enhancer, which was the predecessor's kind of processing algorithm, so in the 270, 870, and the new dynamic HDR enhancer. So we can see that in the bright scenes so the top, top series of images, many more tonal variations are detectable and available for processing. Just a, just a quick note here, when you look at the dynamic HDR image, um, this, is not, this is what's being analyzed, not what's being shown on screen. So it wouldn't result in banding as you would see there. It's just a representation of the number of tones um, that can be identified uh, with this new processor. Um, and with the dark scenes, um, it is especially powerful. And this is where you see the real, uh, benefits of this processing, where many, many tiny tonal variations in shadows can be detected, whereas previously this was a little lacking with our, with our previous generation. So how do we go from that analysis to the creator's intent? So we do this by observing the PQ curve, which all HDR10 content is graded to. So in the past, we had a gap between what our projectors displayed and what was intended with the PQ curve. And this is shown on, that, on the left-hand uh, graph uh, on this slide. So with the orange line being the ideal HDR and the purple line being kind of the projector's achievement. But now, um, and now it's very difficult to um, follow the PQ curve completely with a projector. There are limita limitations in the characteristics, the peak brightnesses, typically lower than what you can achieve with other displays. However, this is where the dynamic tone mapping comes in. So on any particular scene, the dynamic HDR enhancer will dynamically adjust the curve to match the PQ curve as close as possible. So with the dark scene, we can pull down the black level um, with that precision dimming to follow the lower end of the PQ curve much more precisely. And then with the bright scene, again, the tone curve can be adjusted to match the higher end of the PQ curve, uh, again, much more precisely. So this dynamic tone mapping based on frame by frame, scene by scene, um, over the course of the film de delivers a wider dynamic range with color tones much closer to what the creator graded to. So it is really a step change in HDR quality. So we're really looking for you, forward for you to see these models um, in, in in your showrooms. And the other benefit of the X1 for projector is the enhancement to the super resolution reality creation engine. So uh, just as a reminder, the super resolution technology analyzes content all the way down to a pixel level and uses powerful pattern matching uh, algorithm, sorry, um, developed over many years of movie production to enhance image crispness without increasing digital uh, picture noise. So the 29890 can now enjoy the same as enhancements as we saw with the, with the 59790, especially on those high frequency details such as hair and fine textures on clothing, uh, for example. And this really delivers the excellent 4K clarity on screen. And having the advanced picture processing is a key driver for image quality. And Sony display products both TVs and projectors have really led the market for many, many years in this area. And it's a key benefit for, for Sony. And with the X1 for projector, our whole 4K lineup from 290 to 890 can really enjoy a step change in HDR quality, the best 4K clarity, 
and the best motion handling on the market. So it really is uh, a trifecta of, of quality there uh, from Sony with this new with this new processor. And uh, to explain the other new additions to the 290 and 890, um, yeah, these models can now utilize separate SDR HDR settings that were introduced into other models with various firmware updates. So um, you can have even more control over your SDR and HDR calibrations. And in addition to that, there's also another small ease of use function. So with Sony projectors, you can already enjoy uh, auto content detection and mode switching. So whether you're watching SDR, 3D, HDR10 or HLG, uh, HDR content, the projector will automatically detect and use the relevant profile. This has been a bit of a benefit of Sony for many years. But with this new feature, you can now set your preferred HDR10 mode. So when you have an HDR10 signal, uh, or when you receive one and it's detected, you can choose your preference, whether you want HDR10, the standard curve, or HDR10, HDR reference. And just as a reminder, HDR reference is kind of our very accurate tone curve up to a thousand nits, which gives um, really excellent color tones all the way up to that peak brightness. So many people enjoy that mode. And now you can have it set as your preference whenever you um, receive content um, in HDR10. I would also like to highlight two other areas for the 290. Um, and firstly, the, the VW 290, 590 and 790 are all bundled with and benefit from Sony's 4K lens, which is designed specifically for resolving 4K on screen. Um, so we've mentioned this uh, in the past. Um, the Sony 4K lens has a larger spherical front element that is manufactured using an optical polymer, a kind of high grade uh, plastic material. This um, a spherical element has the benefit of increasing the amount of uh, the amount of the lens that can be used for good focus. So by converging more of the light to this to a single focal point, this is where uh, it differs from uh, classical kind of spherical lenses. And this is shown in the, the diagrams on the right hand side. The spherical element being plastic doesn't affect image quality, but it allows the units to be sold at a more realistic price point. I mean, we could have done it in glass but you could be paying a hell of a lot more for, for the same level of image quality. So um, it really is kind of a, a benefit by using these optical polymers. So if you combine this large lens with our large horizontal and vertical shift, you can be really flexible in, in your installations whilst really maintaining uh, 4K uh, quality on screen. And the other highlight for the 290 um, and our whole 4K range benefits from is our um, input lag reduction. So um, I think we can see with the, with the success of the PS5 launch, gaming is becoming uh, even more uh, popular. And with input lag reduction you, um, enabled, you can enjoy a lag-free gaming experience um, with 4K 60p content at 27 milliseconds. So this is the, actually the same performance as, as the 270 before. Um, and this is in line with what you get in Bravia TV. So if you enjoy gaming on your, on your Sony TV, then you'll also enjoy it in a more immersive big screen environment with your projectors. Um, and the entire um, 4K lineup from Sony utilize HDMI 2.0B ports, which enables up to 4K 60p HDR contents on screen. Um, so that's the overview of the 290. We do have some kind of situation images. So you can see one here that you can use to promote the products on, on your website uh, or to articles. So uh, these will be available um, within your, um, your launch packs. So please, please download those uh, and use those to, to promote the products as well. So let me move on to the 890. And this model is what I view as the kind of like the real home cinema connoisseurs kind of projector for people who want the most refined home cinema experience kind of tend to choose this, this uh, VW 890 uh, level uh, projector. And the VW 890 is our premium compact 2200 lumen laser projector. And it also features the X1 for projector processor as the core new benefit uh, that we've already uh, discussed in some detail already in this presentation. But in addition to this, um, I'd like to highlight the other features, so the, the green items in this chart, that make the model so attractive for the high-end market. 
So starting with the ARCF lens. So this is the highest quality uh, flagship um, projector lens from Sony. And it's utilized in all of our kind of uh, ultra high end uh, projection systems. So with the 80K Euro uh, GTZ380, with the 50K Euro VW5000, and now also with this uh, 25K Euro VW890. And um, so it really is a, a premium lens. And the architecture of the lens is the same as the well-respected lens that we actually introduced all the way back in the VW 1100. And it, and it consists of uh, 18 uh, all glass elements, uh, mainly for heat resistance. That's why we choose glass uh, in this particular lens. Uh, and they're comprised into 15 groups. Uh, and this includes uh, extra low dispersion elements to avoid any uh, color fringing or dispersion, especially in the, in the corners of the image. Um, and it truly offers excellent center to corner focus for the best consistency of image uh, available. And when talking about premium 4K projectors, especially in the segment above 10K, uh, laser really, really is a must. I'm not sure quite why you would choose anything else. Let's, let's remind ourselves why laser is such a benefit. Firstly, the light source has 20,000 hours uh, light source life. So with virtually zero maintenance, so no filter, no lamp changes, kind of that hang and forget mentality uh, is there. And with that light source life comes some image quality benefits. So you get consistent brightness and color performance for the long term, day in, day out. So um, you set that HDR performance and you have a true HDR performance for many, many thousands of hours. Um, and also with the laser, you have the ability to quickly control the power of the laser to offer a very smooth, dynamic contrast experience. So when you're watching a dark scene, you can reduce that laser output. When you're watching a bright scene, it can increase it. So that's a very smooth process with Sony projectors and the Sony algorithm that we use. And also in today's world where convenience is key um, and the people like to watch streaming service, the VW 890 is fast to switch on and off. You know, it's, that may sound like a small feature, but again, it just makes it very, very usable. You can turn it, press on, it's ready to use within 30 seconds, which isn't always uh, the case with, with other, other projectors available. And another advantage of the 890 is that it is compact compared to other laser models on the market. And it is also a very similar size to our, our lamp projector. So this gives a couple of benefits in that it's much easier to uh, upgrade from lamp to laser with a Sony laser projector. So you don't need to worry about changing the installation environment. It uses the same mount points. Um, so yeah, it's a very simple, straightforward um, process to, to upgrade from, from lamp to laser with, um, with Sony projectors. And with all our premium laser projectors, uh, you can benefit from a superior contrast performance with our dual contrast engine or dual contrast control engine. And this combines both uh, the management of the laser light source and iris to deliver excellent, precise, dynamic contrast. So applying this black level handling performance along with the X1 for projector processor results in that step change in HDR performance. Uh, and to quickly explain the chart on the left hand side, we can see that the contrast performance for both bright and dark scenes um, are benefited from laser. Laser are, is basically more co coherent than, than lamp light. So you get a better native contrast for bright scenes, but also with the dark scenes, you can lower that laser level. You can finely tune it with the iris to get an even deeper black level than you'd get just on the iris alone. So basically much more refined, much more precise. Uh, it gives you a more, a greater or larger dynamic contrast overall uh, for our premium laser projectors. And um, digital focus optimizer, again, this is included in this model and is included with all our models from the 590 uh, and above. Um, and this is a, a process where we can kind of compensate for any optical blurring in the corners uh, from lenses. All lenses have some level of blurring to the corners. So we can digitally um, correct for, for that um, loss of resolution in the corners and just enhance just those areas that are required to give you a very uniform center to corner 
image on screen. And this is quite powerful. It's quite flexible, has different profiles based on the zoom or the shift and will correct the, um, the areas that only need correcting. So it's not like a uniform sharpening or anything like that. Just enhances those areas uh, that need it. So again, delivering that 4K clarity that you'd expect um, from, from, a, from a Sony 4K projector. And here's some uh, example situation images for the 890s. This is a super premium kind of high-end uh, cinema um, for, yeah, for you to use and promote um, the VW 890 um, to, your, to your customers. So uh, here comes the hard part, <laughs> is trying to show you the difference in image quality over PowerPoint. So <laughs> please, be, please bear with me a little bit here. Obviously, the best way to compare is with the actual products in a controlled environment, not necessarily watching it on a laptop screen or a phone or however you're uh, consuming this, uh, this seminar. So, um, and it's also better with moving images. So today I've got a couple of steals just to give you an impression of the improvement. But yeah, once you get them in your showrooms, trust me, it is real uh, step change uh, in performance uh, with these models. So I'd like to show you just a couple of images uh, highlighting the differences between the uh, 890 and the 870. So what I um, what I kind of call this is kind of the, the, the benefits here is kind of the three C's of image quality. You've got contrast, you've got color and clarity. And all of those are all improved uh, as you step up with the X1 for, for projectors. So with the dynamic HDR enhancer, you're getting better contrast and those more precise color tones then the better super resolution, you're getting better clarity as well. So let's have a look at a, an image here. So this is a, a photograph of a shootout we performed under, under tight conditions. So this is a real photo of, of the projector. Um, it's not uh, edited or, or changed anyway. It's with default settings, um, uh, out of the box um, settings as well. And this is a scene from uh, Batman versus Superman Dawn of Justice. So for those of you who like your HDR Blu-rays, uh, you may have used this as some challenging HDR content, I guess, for, for projectors. Um, so this is the VW870 performance, very nice detailed image. However, when we step to the VW890, which is this one, you can see much more of those three C's I mentioned. You've got more contrast, you've got deeper blacks, you've got better colors, you've got, especially around the highlights, those tones around the highlights are much more uh, defined. Uh, and you've got clarity as well. So by having more contrast, the perception of clarity is much greater as well. So you can see kind of like the, uh, the tendons in the, or the texture of this monster's kind of uh, body as well is kind of highlighted. Um, through uh, this enhancement. So if we look at a side by side here, you can see that you've got you know, deep, deeper black levels, especially in those, um, in those uh, kind of misty cloud areas, more colors and brighter. And it just gives you that overall impression of, of more HDR um, performance than, you've had, than we've had in the past. And here's another example. Here's a picture of, of, a, of another monster. <laughs> um, but again, another challenging HDR image um, on, the, on the 870, still a very, very good image. Um, but as we step to the 890, you can see that you get much more depth in the image with that contrast. It makes it feel almost a bit more kind of 3D or lifelike with the contrast. You also get more colors, especially in highlights. Uh, in these in these dark scenes. So again, if we compare side by side, you're not losing those shadow tones, but you're getting much more depth of the image and especially in those highlights. So again, not ideal to show you on PowerPoint with uh, whatever the contrast of your monitor is, but um, in reality, these are really, really uh, powerful enhancements. So do take a look uh, once you get your hands on the products. And um, similarly with the VW290, you get exactly the same, the same benefits. Um, so you get those, those three Cs again, those contrast, color, and clarity um, with this one. So I've just got one brief image here. So this is the 270 performance um, on a dark scene with some bright highlights and colors. 
and then as you move to the 290 again you get much more depth you get more color tones it's more in line with what the creator actually intended with those color tones than what we had before because it's closer to those that pq curve than it was um, previously so um that's all for the shootout um, i'd love to have spent half an hour with you on the actual projectors and go through it uh, with lots of content but this is the format we're in at the moment um, so I'd like to just um, remind you of our step up strategy through the model range. So yeah, that, that was all the details of going through the two new models, but let me talk you through the step up. So starting at the 290 here, this is our kind of lamp to laser step up. You've got the VW 290 at 5,500 euros with that X1 for projected processor. So that's the key upselling point versus the 270 and all those benefits we've already uh, shown you um, already with a Sony model. But as you step up to the 590, um, you get more brightness um, with 1800 lumens, so you can do bigger screens or better HDR. You also have deeper blacks with the advanced iris. So on both ends of the HDR performance, um, uh, pardon me, it's more, um, yeah, you get more HDR with, with the 590. Also, for those real home cinema users who want the 235 to 1 aspect ratio, you get picture positioning. So this is one of those core upsetting points to the 590, as well as more clarity with Digital Focus Optimizer. Going from the 590 to the 790, again, you get more brightness um, and you get more contrast uh, with the dual contrast control engine. So kind of a typical thing with our step up, you get more brightness, more, more contrast. Um, and it's laser, so it's more consistent for the long-term image quality and it's convenient. Also easy to up upgrade with easy retrofit and it's slightly quieter than the lamp models as well. As we go from the 790 to the 890, again, more brightness, you've got better clarity with this flagship lens. So quite a big step up in clarity. Um, there's also an interchangeable lens, um, optional accessory with the short throw lens if you have a slightly more uh, challenging installation environment that's available. And the step up from the 870 is that, that X1 for projector, as we've mentioned many times. You can then go from that to the 5000, which has 5000 lumens, has DCI color space. So if you want those big screens, four or five meters wide with great brightness, great colors, the 5000 is still uh, one of the best projectors available on the market. And then if you want to go for the best, in my opinion, available uh, projector anywhere for residential use, then you've got the GTZ 380. So you've got that 10,000 lumens, uh, 500 nits of brightness if you choose to have it on, on, a four, on a four meter screen. So this really is comparing to uh, what you get from, a, from an OLED panel or other, other, other displays. Got DCI colors with no compromises, no brightness loss, and you've got the X1 Ultimate for projector. So all those benefits uh, with the X1 Ultimate for projector as well, uh, with um, yeah, all those different functions I won't go into now. So that's kind of our step up uh, through our range. So I just wanted to remind you of that. We do have a step up chart as always, which you guys may be quite familiar with. These will be in your launch packs. So again, if you wanna use that with your customers to explain what the differences are, that is, that is available also. Um, and this is um, the overview of our lineup. We uh, still have the HW65 in our lineup uh, with our HD projector, still incredibly popular actually um, in, in key markets. Um, and then as, as we've mentioned already, we've got our 4K LAMP projectors, 290, 590, premium laser projectors, the 790 and 890, and then our flagships, the 5000 and the 380. We also do, also continue the VZ1000. So this is uh, our premium UST. It is still the only native 4K UST three panel system, high contrast system uh, on the market. So if your customers really want the best UST experience, this is still available for you uh, to purchase. Um, and alongside that, we have our prime support um, extensions available as well. So you can extend um, your service uh, by, by two years. So our standard prime support is for three years. So we'll basically cover any issues with the projector for up to three years as standard, but you can extend these by two years to five years and get access to our help desk. Also with these packages, if you do extend, you get um, elite, um, elite level service, which means you'll get a, a loan 
during your repair. So if you have any issues that require a repair, we'll send you a loan unit so you can have zero downtime uh, with, your, with your projectors. So, um, and there's no logistics charges or anything of like that. It's all covered within, within the price of the packages. So if people really want that, that peace of mind, please uh, take advantage of those packages um, with this extended manufacturer's uh, kind of warranty. Um, and as Adam mentioned, we do have these dealer launch packs. Um, here are the links to those launch packs. So um, yeah, you will be getting the, the slides as well. I'm sure we'll send these links out to you um, as well. Um, so yeah, it, within these packs, you have all, all the information you need to be able to uh, get ready to promote these um, projectors on, on your websites or, or your stores all the data sheets, the, the brochures, the uh, installation manuals, CAD drawings, um, any imagery that we've shown will be all available in these, in these packs. Just remember that, yeah, the, it's embargoed until 2 p.m. So we wanted to give them to you in advance. It's not something we've done always in the past, but this year we wanted to be more prepared for you guys. So um, yeah, please, please use them. Please be prepared, but, but don't, um, don't, um, update your websites, I would say, until 2 p.m. tomorrow when the embargo is uh, released and the PR, PR is out there. Alongside that, we do have our projection simulator web page. This is what you can use to check the installation conditions of the projectors. Um, this is continually updated, this particular link. So um, yeah, whenever the new models are added, this will be updated as well. I think of as of right now, the 29890 aren't on there, but you can use the 270 and 870 as a reference uh, for your installation conditions because th those haven't changed uh, with these models and we'll update the model references uh, in the next um, couple of weeks uh, as well. So, um, and that is it from my side. Sorry, I've realized I've rambled for, for 40, 45 minutes, but we have kind of, just the key summary to remember, we're launching these two fantastic new models, the 290, 590. And with that, we have a really unified 4K lineup now with the X1 for projector, giving that really next level HDR quality and that next level kind of clarity as well you expect from, from 4K uh, projectors. So um, yeah, we really hope you enjoy them. They will be available. Um, I think we're shipping to distribution kind of first week of May. So you'll be able to order um, within that time frame, um, and yeah, really hope you enjoy uh, these projectors, and and yeah, hope you see increased demand with the uh, live sport coming this summer, and with the lockdowns as well, that have increased demand as well. So, thank you very much for your time. Um, I think now we're going to move to um, the Q and A session, so I'll stop sharing, and I think Adam and Enrico are going to join us again. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that, Chris. Um, yeah, it's great to see we've got so much. Good stuff coming and continuing that that real success from the previous models we launched in, into these new models that you mentioned today. Um, we have had quite a lot of questions, so we'll try and get through as many as we can. But um, apologies if we don't get to your question today. We will follow that up. Um, we can follow that up with you afterwards to make sure that we, we give you everything you need. Um, so first up, uh, one quite a few questions about HDMI 2.1 um, and compatibility of that and, and how that will be integrated into to these models or future models. So I don't know who wants to take that one first, maybe uh, Chris? Yeah, yeah, sure, I can take it. Yeah, I, I can understand the demand for HDMI 2.1. I mean, uh, the PS5 has probably had the most incredible launching effect on the market, you know, 2.1 uh, is important for that gaming, um, gaming use, especially in that kind of particular niche of gaming, which is really uh, kind of high end, kind of first person shooter, you need that frame rate. but. Um, with, with Sony home cinema projectors, um, they are primarily focused on being home cinema projectors. You know, we, um, we're not, um, unfortunately, we're not able to introduce uh, HDMI 2.1 this, this time, this time round. Um, but yeah, most of our users of these uh, wouldn't necessarily use those features of the HDMI 2.1 at that highest end. So yeah. Um, yeah, unfortunately, not, they're not available. We are looking into it um, for, for future products, but as of today, we have nothing to announce. But there are, as I mentioned during the presentation, some great features like the um, input lag reduction that really do enhance the ability to play games on, on our projectors. And you do have a really immersive uh, experience. 
I mean, I, I have a PS5 at home. I think like most people do <laughs> or try to do these days. Um, and having a having a 4K 60p experience is quite a revolution these days uh, with the enhancements of previous previous games. So um, I think, yeah, using the PS5 or using other HDMI 2.1 um, sources on the projector, you'll still have a great experience up to 4K 60p. Get you a few gulag, a few more gulag wins as well, Chris. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think everyone's on wars. <laughs> <laughs> Um, next question was about uh, lens memory on the 290. Will the 290 feature lens memory? Um, so no, as I mentioned during the um, the step up, yes. Yeah. So this is one of our core step up step up strategies, going from the 290 up to the 590. So if your customer wants to have that kind of real home cinema experience uh, with a 235 to one screen and auto switching between. Or being able to switch easily between 16 by 9 and 235 to 1. Yeah, the 590 is the first model that we have um, the picture positioning uh, mode on. Yeah, good stuff. Um, is the UBP X1100 still available? And will we release a new Blu ray player this year for the CI channel? Yeah, so I can say that one, Enrico, if you, if you want. Yeah, so uh, this is. Yeah, uh, yeah. So um, yeah, so unfortunately, uh, in January this year, or maybe even towards the end of December, we did have uh, an issue in the component factory, which caused, uh, which was used um, some of the core AV components that were used within the UBP X1100, meaning that we had to actually have to end of life the product at quite short notice back in kind of January, February timing. Um, this is unfortunate. Unfortunately, we couldn't um, recover the manufacturing within a reasonable uh, time frame to be able to continue that, that product. So um, as of today, um, the flagship Blu-ray player from Sony is the X800 M2, and that can be also used um, with, with home cinema uh, projectors. Um, regarding a replacement model, we don't have anything to announce of today. We are looking at it, but yeah, as of today, we don't have anything to announce, I'm afraid. Okay, thank you. Um, a question about actually the, the Bravia, I guess, as Enrico mentioned, um, we're widening our kind of residential portfolio. So we've recently seen the launch of the 32 and the 100 inch Bravias. Will these be available to the custom install channel? Absolutely, yes. I mean, uh, it's uh, on my knowledge that uh, I don't think there are other manufacturers with uh, such extended range of Bravia with tuner and without tuner from 32 inches to 100 inches. And absolutely, this will be available uh, through the residential uh, sales team so this, through this channel. Absolutely, yes. It's part of uh, our strategy. Great stuff. Um, interesting question here, actually. Some competitor models are now utilizing RGB light sources, such as the Samsung Premiere. Has Sony considered implementing similar technology? This is for Chris. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, you know it, you know your stuff. Um, yeah, so um, RGB light sources, yes. Yeah, so as you know, we use uh, laser phosphor inside our, our laser projectors. So our R&D team um, obviously have taken uh, a look at the RGB um, light sources. They've been looking at this for, for many, many years um, through, through our product de development. And as of today, there are still a couple of compromises with the technology. Um, with green lasers in particular, they are about um, half as efficient as the red and the blue lasers available. So what that means is if you want to have a high brightness, uniform performance, you need to have a much larger uh, projector in terms of physical size, and that results in much more expense as well. So um, at this time, we feel the compromise of having that extra cost, having that lower brightness um, with, with the green in particular, is, is too much of a compromise. So to deliver the best image quality, we continue to use our laser phosphor. Um, but as those things improve, uh, I'm sure, yeah, we'll, we'll see that technology being uh, introduced um, into the future. But as of today, um, the products we see on the market um, do have some compromises in terms of brightness. So um, yeah, even though it is, it is quite exciting uh, stuff going forward. Good stuff. Um, is the dynamic HDR enhancer equivalent to dynamic tone mapping? Yes, so uh, this is a question we had a lot at the, at the other launch actually. Yes, so it is, it is dynamic tone mapping because we are dynamically changing the tone curve 
based on whether it's a dark screen, dark scene, whether it's a bright scene, we are dynamically changing the tone curve to match that as closely to the PQ. Uh, one thing that I think kind of may have confused people is the kind of Sony philosophy behind it, this kind of creator's intent. We're not looking necessarily to cover, um, to recover every single tone in the highlights or recover every other tone, maybe somewhere else in the image. We're looking to give the HDR intent and with, with projectors, it's really important to utilize as much as possible the dynamic range available to give that HDR intent. And that's really, that's really what we aim to do. And I think that's really what we've achieved with, uh, with the whole 4K lineup um, with this X1 for projector. Yeah, and HDR processing is done on a frame by frame. Yes, yeah, it's done on a frame by frame basis. Yeah, so yeah, each scene, we actually look at the histogram and we'll dynamically adjust that based on Sony's experience with this processing, especially from the Bravia. I mean, it's uh, Bravia have done this for many years as well. Um, one thing to note as well is Sony is kind of makes their product, products as easy to use as possible. So, I mean, the, you have three settings here, I think low, middle and high. I think middle probably gives you the best overall uh, image quality from, from my view, but it's up to you. But one thing uh, that we like to say is you kind of set it once and you forget about it. You don't need to customize your project to every piece of content you're, you're watching. You can just set it and have a great HDR experience, whatever you're watching. Yeah. Um, sorry, just going through these. Just conscious of time, we'll try and answer as many of these as possible, but there's, there's quite a few. So it's... Um, proving a little bit tricky. There's a question actually about um, how, what's the best way to upsell from competitor models to a 290? Um, Chris, I mean, I mean, that one really is a case of, I think if I would answer that one is, is definitely to see the projectors, you know, we will have, um, you know, each of you speak to your account managers, they will have demo units of these and it's obviously demo units will be available to purchase, but really, you know, the classic Sony phrase, seeing is believing with these, as soon as you show a customer what's possible, um, and show them these new units. That's that's half the job done straight there because you can really see the benefits from um, from from competitive models to our models. Yeah, that yeah. upsell there. And, and just to add to that, yeah. Sorry, sorry, Mike. No, no, no. Just um, just absolutely yes. I mean, showrooms. Uh, we 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 need to show the, the projectors because that can absolutely give uh, the value of of the projectors. Um, yeah. fully. And yeah, don't don't always you can't sell these projectors via the brochure spec, you know. I mean, a lot of the the lower end, the brochure specs are always maximum numbers, everything top. But when you actually see the image quality, that's the difference. You know, what do you actually get on screen uh, is the important thing with these models. So yeah, make sure. I agree. You At the end, it's the experience and the perception are much more important. The specification of the numbers, because mm -hmm. when you look. You are able to judge if the image quality, the contrast, the depth of field, any kind of uh, all the aspects that are creating the image quality in your perception are better or not from the others. And you can't really read the only on the specs. I fully agree no, with that. No, exactly. Um, yeah, just conscious of time, we've got one minute left. So, um, there are a few questions that we haven't got to, so we will follow those up individually um, with each of you. Um, but just to to close out today yeah thank you very much to everyone for taking the time to join today we hope you found this session useful and you're yes as excited for us as um to have these new models and available um, and as early as in the year as we've got them so thanks again for any more information please feel free to reach out to your your sony account manager or your distribution account manager for any specific details on these new models but once again thank you and let's hopefully see you all soon yeah. thanks thank everyone you. thank you, you. bye